Dundee for Dave by three lengths. Two in second place, Lana Lee, Dizzy Rascal, a clear break, then the washed out. One flight left to jump and D for Dave. Dizzy Rascal has moved into second, but has still got five lengths to make up as they come to the final flight. And D for Dave and Mark Walsh over the last clear. Dizzy Rascal second and then comes washed out. But on the run up to the finish, it's D for Dave who's won it quite convincingly now. From second home, Dizzy Rascal. Third home is washed out and fourth home. Yeah, it was great. So it was a, a bad day at the office for the bookies. An absolutely brilliant day for uh, for pulling off a good old fashioned betting coup. And the people who organise this, do you know who they are? Who are? Uh, can you I don't say? Know they, no, I don't, basically, I don't know. Douglas Taylor is with us now. Congratulations to you, Douglas. Thank you very much. What made you so confident that your horse was going to win if it was been given a 14 to 1 odds by the bookies? Ah, I was quietly confident. Uh, Connor was, uh, thought he was improving all the time. And Sorry, who's Connor? Connor O'Dwyer is winner. And he told you this horse could win? Yeah, he reckoned uh, the trip would, would suit him, the competition was light enough, and he fancied him on the day. Of course, we've all been reading about the military precision with the way the bets were put on and, and what have you. Were you aware of that going into the race or were you just aware that there was a few quid going on? No, I was just aware. I had told Doug, I said, tonight's tonight. I said, it's, it's a bad race. If he's ever going to win, it's, it's tonight. And he had, uh, obviously, all this planned <laughs> beforehand. So, um, you know, uh, I think it worked out quite well. And what was the first you heard about all the agents that had been dispatched? And when did you actually find out about that first? Um, I went for a, a quiet drink with Doug after and he <laughs> filled me in a bit on what was after happening. So. So, uh, um, and then through a course of paper today and whatever, so uh, I don't know, it was good. Could you have afforded to take a loss of this amount of money if the horse hadn't won, or if, God forbid, it had fallen on the way through the race? Uh, as you say, you only bet what you can afford to lose. <laughs> And what did you do then when you heard about the guy going in, as we've just been told about by Mark, handing over the instructions as to what to do? Well, as I said to Mark this morning, it was really only a dry run. Would you ever do it again, do you think? Oh, soon, yeah. Do you think now, are the bookies, well, of course, will the bookies be able to stop this? Somebody coming in placing a 200 euro bet, how are they going to know what's happening in every bookies around the country? Well, at the same their time? job is to take bets in. And, uh, you know, we, hopefully someday we win, someday we lose. Got a feeling that tonight's gonna 